Hi everyone! Today we are going to learn how to use the knife to cut some simple fruits and vegetables. Using a knife can be quite daunting especially when you have little to no vision. Today I'm going to show you some easy methods to start off with first to get your confidence up before we move on to the big sharp knife. We are actually going to use like a small butter knife that is actually quite dull. It will not hurt us even if it hits our fingers. So this is a good knife to start with especially when you're just learning how to chop or cut something. Introduction to what's on the table. First of all, we need to prepare our workstation. In front of me, I have a large plastic tray to keep all my ingredients and tools organised. It's good to use a tray because without it, I might find it hard to find like if my tomato has rolled away or if I have misplaced my knife somewhere. If I have to go and look for it, I might end up cutting myself. So it's always good to use a tray and knives should always be facing outwards away from you. So I've actually placed my knife um, facing the top portion of my tray, not facing away from me. Outside of my tray, I have a bowl to place all my ingredients in, as well as a chopping board to chop some of these things that I have in front of me. Under the table, I also have a small rubbish bin to throw away all the peels and other unwanted things to keep this area neat. Let's start practicing by using the banana and the small butter knife. The banana is a good fruit to start with because it is soft, and it's easy to cut even with a very dull knife. So if you're using a plastic knife or even like a butter knife, you will definitely be able to cut through the banana and if you make any mistakes, you will still not hurt yourself. So it's a good way to start and build your confidence up with. You can start with peeling the banana first. So over here, I have totally removed the peel from my banana. You can go ahead and do that. And then after that, just take the peel and throw it into the rubbish bin so that you keep the area neat. Once you've done that, we're going to move the banana onto the chopping board. We're going to try to cut this banana into four portions. And to do so, we're going to learn how to find the middle of the banana or whatever fruit you're going to plan to deal with in the future. This method, we can actually start by orientating our banana on the chopping board. Make sure it's lengthwise. The length of the banana should be going from the left to the right. It can be horizontal. Next, place both your right thumb and your left thumb on either end of the banana. Between your thumbs should be how long that banana is. Once more, put the left thumb on the left side of the banana and the right thumb on the right side of the banana. So that's how long the banana is. To find the center of the banana, you can start by moving both your index finger, starting from your thumbs on either side of the banana, and then start moving it towards each other along the banana. So eventually your index fingers are going to meet and that's where the middle of the banana is. Okay, let's try that one more time. Both thumbs on either ends of the banana. Index finger starting from both thumbs. And then just slowly move it at about the same speed. It doesn't need to be accurate. Move it slowly towards each other until they meet in the middle. We're going to check whether this is accurate or not. Now that you've found the middle, keep one hand there while the other hand can pick up your butter knife to make the cut. So I'm a right-hander. I'm going to use my right hand to find my butter knife in the tray while my left hand doesn't move away from the banana because where my index finger of the left hand is was where the middle of the banana was. I measured it just now. So let's not move that so that we don't have to do that all over again. Taking your knife, move it along the side of the banana. I'm starting my knife from where my right thumb used to be. I'm just going to slide it all along the banana until it meets my index finger from my left hand. One more time, I'm using the knife. You can place it on the chopping board. Find the right side of the banana and then just move it along the banana all the way until you find where your left hand index finger is. Once you find that, your knife has found the center of the banana. So once you're ready, you can make that cut. Just slice it all the way through. You don't have to use that much strength, especially if your banana is ripe. So once you've done that, let's place our knife back into the tray and let's compare the pieces. So we'll just put the pieces side by side make sure they are in the same orientation and then you just measure whether they are about the same length. These two pieces are almost the same length but not really. So that just means that I need to get better at this. What I can do is continue practicing using these two smaller halves of the banana. I'm going to put one of the halves into the bowl so I just don't get mixed up while I use the other half to continue practicing my measuring methods. So once again, left thumb on the left side of the banana, right thumb on the right side of the banana both index fingers slowly moving towards the middle and then when they meet each other, that should be the middle portion. Then I'm going to take my knife without moving my left hand and then my knife should start from the chopping board, 
find the banana and then start searching for where my index finger has already marked out. Once the knife finds the side of the index finger, just make that cut straight down. Then you can just measure again to see whether the pieces are equal or not. I'm gonna put both my smaller pieces that I've just cut into the bowl and then take out the other piece that I have left in the bowl initially to just try and make that cut again. So just one more time, left hand on the left side of the banana, right hand on the right side of the banana, your index finger can just start moving along towards each other. Find the centre, right hand, starting from the right side of the banana, finding my left index finger, and then when I'm ready, I'm gonna make that cut. Okay, now I have four pieces of banana and I can just measure whether to see they are all the same or not. You can just feel and then you can just stack them side by side to check whether they are equal. If they are not, you can continue to practice this method until it becomes good and standardised. If this method is not working out for you, there is a second method we can try. Doesn't require you to use two hands to measure. I find that this method is not as accurate but it is much easier when you move on to chopping other vegetables because it's faster. So let's start by using a tomato. Okay, make sure that your knife always goes back into the tray. I forgot to do that. I'm going to take a soft tomato. This tomato is rather ripe. I'm going to move it onto my chopping board. Make sure there's nothing left on your chopping board. So I've moved all my banana into the bowl already. Just have a few of this tomato. Find where the stem of the tomato used to be. It should be the portion of the tomato that pops inwards and it's a little rough. So I found that. And then now, face that portion down onto the chopping board. So it gives a little bit of stability to the tomato that you're chopping. To measure the middle of this tomato, what you can do is hold the tomato between your thumb and your index finger. Your thumb and index finger should form an arc above the tomato, like you're making a door frame around the tomato and the tomato is for the person walking through the door. Another example would be like your thumb and index finger is the hairband. The tomato is actually somebody's head. The hairband is going around the person's head. The rest of your fingers can just put next to your index finger to just keep the tomato stable. Make sure your last finger is out of the way of any knives that might come through. Just keep it all close to your index finger. Okay, I'm just gonna tilt my hand to show uh, anyone with low vision uh, how I'm positioning my hands. We're going to insert the knife into the space between your fingers and the tomato. So basically where the top of the arc is, it's also the portion right below your palm, uh, the space between the palm and the tomato. We're not going to insert the knife yet, uh. we're just going to feel using your other hand where this portion is so that we can get an idea of where to put the knife later. The middle of the tomato is actually where your knuckle is. The knuckle of your index finger should be where your knife should go later on. So if you have a little feel now, I'm a right-hander so my right hand is free and my left hand is holding on to the tomato right now. What you can do is use your right hand's index finger and just slot it where the knife is going to be later. So I just have it slotted just right under where the knuckle of my second finger is. I can actually feel the butt of the tomato right under my right hand's index finger. So later on where you're going to cut is just where the butt of the tomato is and it's also where the centre of the tomato actually is. One more time, okay, so the knife is going to be inserted right under the portion which is the knuckle of your index finger. Place your right hand's index finger where your knife is supposed to be and just have a little feel of where that portion is right now. I can actually feel that my left hand's palm is pressing against my right hand's index finger against the tomato. This is where the knife is going to be later on. When you've gotten an understanding of what I've just said, then you can go on to pick up your knife. So what I'm going to do now is just pick up my knife. I'm just going to insert it into the space between my index finger and my thumb where I had my right hand's index finger just now. And then I'm going to make sure that the blade is facing the tomato while the back of the knife is actually against my palm. So the back of my knife is actually right where the index finger knuckle is. If I push my knuckle downwards, I can actually feel the knife, how it's pressing against the tomato. So this should be the centre of the tomato. So I'm going to make the cut now. I'm going to just use that little bit of pressure from the back of my knuckle to just push down against the tomato. And then once I've made that little cut, I'm just going to saw through the tomato all the way until I hit the chopping board. Now, I'm going to put my knife back into the tray and then just compare the two halves that I've just cut. How to compare it, right? You can just face both flat sides down onto the chopping board 
and then just use whole palm to feel whether the top of the tomato is even across both pieces or not. I can feel like one side of my tomato is actually bigger than the other so I didn't make the cut really well. Let's try again one more time using one half of the tomato. I'm going to put one half of the tomato into the bowl and leave one half of it on the cutting board. This time, I'm going to place the flat side on the chopping board and then I'm going to make that same arc using my thumb and index finger again. Same method, my thumb on one side of the tomato and my index finger on the opposite side of the tomato. There's a space between the thumb and the index finger in the shape of an arc again. Using my right hand index finger, I'm just going to feel that space between my left hand's index finger and thumb. Once I felt that space, I'm just gonna simulate like I did just now where the knife is gonna be. I've actually used my knuckle to press down against my right hand's index finger until I can feel my index finger between my knuckle and the tomato. So this is where I'm going to make the cut later on. So once I'm confident, I'm gonna just take my knife Slot it between the tomato and my palm again. Face the blade downwards. The back of the blade should be against my second knuckle. You can actually feel it going across all your knuckles along your palm. So uh, remember that this is a dull knife, so don't worry. I'm going to make the cut soon, but first I'm going to make sure that my tomato facing downwards is actually in the position that I want. So I actually have where the tomato stem used to be facing towards the right side, so that when I make the cut, it'll be like slicing down along the tomato rather than across the fleshy part of the tomato. This is just practice. Uh, the tomato is round, so just practice this method of cutting first. It doesn't matter which orientation, just get the hang of measuring the halves first. Once you've got that in position, press it down a little bit and then saw, 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 saw to make the cut. Okay. Once you've done that, you can actually just compare the two pieces to see whether it's even. I think it's rather even this time. It's a good method of practicing cutting even halves. You can continue practicing using the other half of the tomato, even another tomato. Try out these two methods. Are they equal? Are they not equal? Do you prefer one method to the other method? Leave your comments down in the portion below. If you know any other methods, leave it in the comments below as well so that we can learn from them, learn from each other, and we can share it with anyone with vision impairment in Singapore. Until then, keep trying, stay home, stay safe. Bye-bye.